We're in John chapter 8, the first few verses, and it's the story of the woman who's caught in adultery and brought in front of Jesus by the men of the law and the Pharisees. I want you to imagine the scene. These men who have studied the word, who built their whole religious identity and integrity on being the ones who know about God, who know every letter and every law, and yet they miss the word made flesh right in front of them. I want you to imagine a woman, this woman who's been caught doing something that she shouldn't have been doing and she's dragged into the middle of the crowd and her shame and her name are made public. She's intimidated by the stares of the crowd and the stones on the ground and yet she sees what the religious men don't. They call him teacher and they try to trick and to trap. She calls him Lord and sees the way, the truth and the life. And then there's Jesus son of God and son of man and he sees them all. He sees the sin of the woman that's been made public and he sees the sin of the men that they're trying to keep private and the public and the private well they're all the same to him. He confronts them all. He kneels in front of the men and he writes in the sand making their sin as public as hers. What did he write? I wonder if he wrote these words from Jeremiah. Lord, you are the hope of Israel. All who forsake you will be put to shame. Those who turn away from you will be written in the dust because they have forsaken the Lord, the spring of living water. And here is the sadness. These men, they carry on in their forsaking, in their blindness, in their deafness, their religious anger, and they still do not see the hope and the living water and the word made flesh right in front of them. And so, full of grace, he gives them another chance. And he says, if you've never sinned and never desired, then throw the first stone. And they could have thrown their stones and their knees on the ground and admitted that they were wrong and dropped the shackles of their religion and picked up the freedom of righteousness. But instead, one by one, they turn their backs and they walk away until it was just Jesus and the woman. And she's no longer surrounded by these angry men and their self-righteous religion, but she's face to face with grace and truth and love. And Jesus, he does not condemn her, but frees her and says, go and from now on be free from a life of sin. May we be the ones who see others the way Jesus does. We won't condemn, we'll bring freedom. We won't point fingers, we'll point to grace. We won't turn a blind eye to our sin. We will stand with Jesus and we'll pursue his holiness because he sees us, every part of us. Do we see him? Have we lost sight of him as the religious men had? Take this moment to sit or stand or kneel with Jesus and let him see you, sin and all. Let him deal with the stones that you think are aimed at you, shame, insecurity, anxiety, worry, the fear that you're not important enough, not worthy enough, not lovable enough, the fear that you'll never be good enough, the fear that you're too broken, too weary, too old, too young, and then see him, and as he looks at you with eyes full of love, know this, our names are not written in the dust. They're scarred in wounds that bought us forgiveness and life in all its 